Welcome back or welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I did these boho knotless braids, bora bora braids, whatever you want to call them, on myself. I wore these braids in Jamaica and Aruba. Y'all probably saw them in both of those vlogs and the Jamaica prepping pack. So I'm going to show you how to do them. Starting with the products you'll be needing. So this is the braiding hair I got by Altre, the expression braiding hair, pre-stretched. I got 42 inch, didn't need mine super long. I tried to find the shortest braiding hair I could find, honestly. And it came with three in a pack. I got one B and I only used one pack of this. So this is all you need right here as far as the braiding hair. As far as the curly pieces, the curly hair, I got the Water Wave bulk hair for braiding from YG Wigs. I got the natural black 18 inches double drawn. This is so much better than using bundles and cutting off the wefts. Don't do that. Trust me, I did it the last time I did this style and a lot of the hair got thrown away because when you cut it, you have so many of those short pieces and strays that end up shedding out and you have to throw it away. And I wasted like half of the bundles doing that. So I definitely recommend this over bundles and cutting off the wefts. Just get the pre-cut hair like this. So quick unboxing, this is what came in the bag. They gave a little flower clip and then a rat tail comb, some clips and one of those little parting rings that you put on your finger. And there's an edge brush behind the rat tail comb. You just can't see it. And then of course you have the hair itself. Again, I got the 18 inch water wave double drawn and I got five packs of that. I used four and like a little bit of the fifth pack, but I just like really big hair and mine was definitely full enough, but I could have used all five, honestly. This is what it looks like out of the pack. And then I also got this three-way mirror. I got this off of Amazon. I'll link it in my storefront, but this was very helpful. I wish I had this last time. And then this is the braiding gel that I used, got from the beauty supply store. And I also got this wooden braid rack from the beauty supply store. Also very helpful. Didn't have this last time either, which I did. Because the way I was struggling, I'm embarrassed looking back at it because I didn't even have to do all that if I had just got this stuff the first time. But anyway, this is my little setup. Um, I hung my three-way mirror on a backdrop stand. I know you can hang it on a door, but I didn't have a door where I could hang this and also have my vanity either right in front of me or behind me. So that's why I hung it on a backdrop stand. Again, I definitely recommend getting all of this if you're going to be doing this yourself. I promise you it will be 10 times easier. And then here's all my hair. I did wash all of this beforehand. If you want a video on that, I can do that because my scalp gets super irritated and itchy when I get braids. And so this is the first time I got braids and washed the hair and I didn't have any itching. My scalp wasn't irritated, so it definitely worked. I also washed the human hair because with wigs, I have to wash the hair because that will break me out too if I don't wash my wigs and stuff beforehand, human hair. So I did wash the curly hair as well. So if you have that issue, definitely try washing your braiding hair because it definitely helped me. And if you have a hairstylist that provides the hair, see if you can tell them like, hey, I'm gonna bring my own hair because I wanna wash it or ask them to wash it or something because it's just not worth all that itching to me. I hear they make some kind of hair though, some kind of braiding hair that doesn't have all them chemicals on it that make you itch and stuff. I forgot what they said it's called, but you could try that as well if you don't wanna wash it. They say that that works and it doesn't itch. Okay, so now I'm moving on to parting. Now, I can't I can't help you right here, girl. I'm sorry. I, I suck at parting. But what I can do for you is show you the video that I follow that helped me part my hair on my own. So this is a TikTok that I follow. I will link it below so y'all can give her her views and her likes and everything. She can get her credit. But this is the video I follow. Her video is really helpful. Again, it's linked in the description box. So once you've done all of your parting, you can move on to separating your braiding hair and your curly hair onto your wooden rack. I used the first five spools on each row for my braiding hair on the left side and the last five spools on the right side for my curly hair. So I've got both my braiding hair and my curly hair separated, ready to go, ready to grab. And then of course you will repeat this when you run out of hair on your rack. So I'm going to show y'all a video that I followed that helped me learn how to do knotless braids on myself or knotless braids period because the first time I did this style was last year when I went to Jamaica and this is my second time doing this style and for one I'm not a good braider at all so for me to want to even do knotless braids on myself like I can barely braid my real hair so for me to want to do knotless braids a full head of knotless braids on myself and right before a trip is kind of insane but this is the video that helped me learn how to do them on myself. I promise you, if I can learn how to do it, you can learn how to do it because when I tell you I suck at braiding, I suck at braiding. Like, I don't know how to hold my hands. I just like a whole fool when I try to do braids. Like, even just a plait. I look insane. But that is the video that helped me. Again, I will link it below in the description box because I just don't think I'll be able to explain it to y'all. I'm not even gonna lie to you and I don't want to take credit for that at all. That is all her 
So make sure y'all give her her views and all of that because her video was super helpful for me, especially doing them on yourself. So I can't really teach y'all how to do a knotless braid or like feeding in here, but I am gonna insert the video of me explaining how to do the boho braid once you gotten that part down. Once you know how to add in hair and do a knotless braid, now I can help you. So I'm gonna show y'all how many pieces you need to add, how many pieces of the curly hair you need to add, how many pieces of the braiding hair you need to add, how thick each of those pieces need to be. That's what I'm gonna show you. In order to get the fullness that I got with my braids, because I wanted mine super full, like I barely wanted to see a braid. That's why I said I really could use all five packs of hair. And I couldn't find any tutorials for real on how to achieve that because the braid girlies be stingy, y'all. They do not want to share the tea. Like they do not want to put the girls on. But that's okay because I'm little miss, figure out how to do it herself. And I'm going to put the girlies on when I figure it out. So don't you worry about it. Don't y'all worry about all that gatekeep. So I'm gonna insert my little video on the right over here that shows better like what I'm doing because I realized the way I was filming it on the left side, y'all couldn't really see that well. So right here, I'm showing y'all that I have two different colored gloves on. The blue glove is my left hand. The black glove is my right hand. So that way, y'all can know the difference. The blue glove, which is my left hand, is the side I will always be adding hair to. The hand I will always be adding the hair to. So you always add the hair to the same side, the same side of the braid. The black glove, that's the hand I use to grab and pick up the hair and add it to my left hand, the blue glove. Okay, so now that we're clear on that, the first thing you're gonna do is take some of that braiding gel and add it to your hair, the root of your hair. That will keep it nice and smooth. And it also helps keep your hair separated as well when you're braiding. So I'm separating the hair into three sections like you normally would with a braid. And then I'm going to braid down two times. So you see one and then two. And then on that third time is where I'm gonna start adding in the hair. So the first piece of hair I'm gonna add in is the curly hair, not the braiding hair, because you want that curly hair at the root. Because I wanted that look, like I said, I barely want to see my braids. So having those curly pieces at the root first definitely helped with that. So you don't see too much braid at the root first. You know what I'm saying? So you see the curly pieces have that little straight blunt looking end and the other end is more curly. You want to add that straight end into the braid and the more curly end is the end that's going to hang out. So you're going to pin that up with a clip or something. I use one of these duckbill clips and just clip it up out the way. You're going to braid that other end into the braid. And then you just start braiding down again. So I'm going to braid down until my left hand, the blue glove, is back on the right side of the braid as you see here and at that point is when I'm going to add the first piece of braiding hair. So here I am adding it in. I'm kind of trying to show y'all how thick these pieces of braiding hair are as well. Same thing with the curly hair. So I'm adding that in between my thumb and pointer finger and then I throw the rest over my pointer finger and then again braid down until my left hand, the blue glove, is back on the right side again and I will add in my second piece of braiding hair. So my hand is back on that side, back on the right side of the braid, and now I'm adding in my second piece. We will be adding in three pieces of braiding hair. So again, throwing the rest of that hair over my pointer finger and braiding down again until that blue glove is back on the right side of the braid. And now I'm adding in that third piece, which is our last piece of braiding hair that we'll be adding in. Anything else we're adding in from this point will be the curly hair. So I just keep braiding down from there and then what point you add in your next piece of curly hair will be up to you. You can kind of see where I added in my next piece of curly hair from the first piece of curly hair we did. Um, you can kind of see the amount of space I left in between, but the closer you add them in together, the more full it'll be. The more you space them out, the less full it'll be. You know, so if you're trying to add in a lot and have it super full, you might want to pack them in kind of close. I think the next time I do these braids, which who knows when that'll be, because baby, this wore me out. But the next time I do this, I think I'll pack mine in even closer than this, because like I said, I just like big hair. Like, I think I would want them even fuller than this. I think this was full enough. I was definitely satisfied with it, but I could go even fuller. I just love big hair. That's just me. But anyway, you're just going to keep braiding down, add in your next piece of curly hair and you're gonna do that all the way down until you have eight to ten pieces if you're going for the look that I had I added about eight to ten pieces of curly hair on each braid so you're just gonna do this all the way down until you have that many or however many you want however full you want it to be it's completely up to you 
Um, here you see me pulling on the ends of that curly hair to kind of feather out the ends so that it braids into the hair neater because if you don't, you'll see later on those blunt ends. And I showed y'all that on purpose so you would see what it would look like if you don't feather out your curly hair, feather the ends before you add it in. So I recommend feathering the ends while you're adding it to your braiding rack. So once you've added your eight to 10 pieces of curly hair, you can remove your clip and this is what it should look like. You see those blunt ends sticking out on the top? That's what I was talking about. If you don't stretch the ends of your curly hair, that's what's gonna happen. And then what you see me doing here, I just pull down all the little curly pieces just to get out any excess shed hair so I don't have hair shedding everywhere. That's all I'm doing. And that's it. Again, eight to 10 curly pieces per braid. If you have somebody doing your braids for you, that's something you could tell them to make sure they have it this full. Just be like, I want eight to 10 curly pieces on each braid. And yeah, that way they'll get it exactly how full you want it. So right here, I'm just showing y'all how the hair looks dry, but we're not quite done yet. We're gonna go in and um, dip the ends, but I'm gonna be curling all these straight ends. You see, I'm pulling out all the straight ends. I'm not dipping all the hair, just these ends that I'm gonna roll on some flexi rods. So I'm just sectioning off the hair here so I can do, I think I did five sections five flexi rods and again i'm just pulling out all those straight ends of the braiding hair to wrap around the flexi rod so we can dip them in the hot water i boiled some water to dip them in so those pieces will blend with the rest of the hair i don't know nothing about tying no knots and adding the curly hair to the end i don't know nothing about none of that so this is what i did for the ends of my hair so like you see me doing here i'm just wrapping the ends around the flexi rod and then I will move on to the next section. Again, not dipping all the hair, just the hair that's on the flexi rod is the only thing we're dipping. Um, I heard that dipping human hair in boiling water can mess up the texture or mess up the hair or something. So that's why I was afraid of dipping all of it. I only did, again, the hair that's wrapped around the flexi rods. And you'll see when we get ready to do it, how I moved the rest of the hair out of the way. But yeah, that's all I'm going to be doing right here is just separating all of that hair out and adding a flexi rod. Okay, so I have five sections, all of the ends are wrapped. So I'm getting ready to dip them in the hot water. So you see how I'm grabbing up the rest of the hair to hold out of the way. Now a little bit of it is gonna get dipped because I mean, you can't really avoid that. Um, but I'm just trying to keep as much of the hair out of the way as possible because I just wasn't trying to take that chance because people were saying that it messed up the hair. Other people were saying it didn't. I don't know, I just wasn't gonna take that chance. So I just tried to keep as much of it out of the way as I could. And right here, I have a towel and a t-shirt to squeeze the water out of the hair with. The towel is just there for an extra layer to keep that hot water from getting on me. I'm kind of trying to treat the human hair like I would my hair. So that's why I'm using a t-shirt, you know, just reduce the frizz and all of that. You know, that's what you're supposed to do when you do your natural hair, dry your hair with a t-shirt or something like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna be dipping each section and yeah, I'll come back when we get ready to move on to the next step. All right, so now I'm just removing the flexi rods, unrolling the hair, nothing too much to explain here. And yeah, this is what it looks like at this point. So now I'm gonna add some mousse. This is the mousse that I use. I got this from the beauty supply store. I think I added mousse to my hair one other time. I had these braids in, but I also saw somebody recommend that you should add like a conditioner or a leave-in to the curly hair, like treat it like you would 
your natural hair. So I think people were saying that the mousse can kind of dry out the human hair and make it a little more stiff over time if you do that every day. So the rest of the time I had this hair in, I was adding this conditioner right here, the Afro G leave-in conditioner. It's a liquid, so you can put it in a spray bottle and spray your hair with it. And yeah, that's just supposed to be better than putting the mousse on it every day. It's more moisturizing for the curls than the mousse is. So yeah, and then the last step, the last thing I'm doing, and then we're done. I'm just adding some oil sheen to the hair for a little bit of shine. And that is it. This is what we're looking like. This is the back, and this is it wet or with the mousse on it. Y'all saw it dry, and then this is it after applying mousse to it. So yeah, hopefully this video was helpful. I Hopefully I covered everything and I explained everything well enough. I did the best I could, y'all. I'm not that good at explaining stuff like this. But if you have any questions, just let me know. That is it for this video, you guys. Hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.